My name is Sanjay Sisodia. I'm an adult consultant neurologist working at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery and the Epilepsy Society. And I've been a consultant for um, over 20 years. Alternating hemiplegia of childhood is a rare condition, probably affecting one in a million people, although we don't know for sure. It may be more common. It's a condition which starts early, um, often in infancy, with a range of different symptoms. One of those is uh, weakness of one side of the body um, that um, may disappear when the infant or child falls asleep. And this is how the condition originally got its name. But there are a lot of other symptoms and features of the condition, um, some of which uh, may uh, come and go. Um, and are called paroxysmal, and others of which may stay and progressively accumulate um, over time. It's called alternating hemiplegia of childhood um, because onset is in childhood, but uh, many children with this condition will go on into adulthood, and so the name is a little bit uh, misleading. We don't really know what's happening in the brain um, in people with AHC. We know the cause for most people with it, and obviously we can see the consequences of that cause, but the link between the cause and the effects is less clear. What we know is that the gene that is faulty and that causes the AHC um, produces a specific protein or actor, if you like, in the brain. And what this does is to help maintain the chemical environment in the brain. So the brain is a very complicated organ, we all know that. There are lots of different elements in the brain. Um, there are the brain cells, the neurons, that are electrically active and firing off, and that's what happens when we think and move and talk. Our brain cells are all active and talking to each other. And there are lots of other elements in the brain that also do lots of things to make it all work together. For that to happen, all the cells in the brain have got to be sitting in the right environment. They've got to have the right chemicals around them in the right way, in the right concentration. And what the protein does um, uh, in AHC normally is to help maintain that environment, help to maintain the way that different chemicals are distributed in the brain, and specifically um, the way that different uh, electrical ions are um, dis distributed in the brain. Now, we don't really know exactly what goes on, but what we presume is that um, when there's a mutation in the gene, the protein that it produces doesn't work properly um, and seems somehow not to be able to maintain that gradient, um, that distribution of electrical particles in the brain. And what happens over time and why the symptoms are sometimes worse and sometimes not so bad and why things may change over time, we don't really understand. We don't understand how that all links together. But our understanding at the moment is that it's really about the environment in the brain in which the cells of the brain work. As an adult neurologist, I don't see children with this condition. But of course, many children who have the condition will transition to adult care. And when that happens, we carefully review the history. We go over what has happened um, uh, since the diagnosis uh, was made and since the condition started. And what we will find, for example, can be very variable. We may see that somebody with the condition coming to our care um, uh, has a relatively normal life. Um, they're still walking. Um, they will be able to have a discussion about their condition and uh, answer questions about their condition, explain how it affects them. On the other hand, um, the condition can sometimes affect people much more severely and can mean that they are unable to walk or unable to walk safely. Um, they may have significant um, learning difficulties and be unable to answer questions about their condition or unable to understand what is going on. So it's very variable. Uh, the spectrum of problems associated with the condition can really be very wide. And this is one of the challenges with this condition. AHC can affect people in many different ways. For example, there can be um, seizures, there may be abnormal movements of the body, um, there may be stiffening of the body. Some of these things can come and go, some of them may be more permanent. 
With this wide range of features, we often need to think about different treatments for the different elements of the condition. Some of the elements, like seizures, we may be able to use existing anti-seizure drugs to try and stop the seizures from happening. And for some of the other aspects, we may have treatments that treat the symptoms, such as, for example, treatments to help with stiffness. Unfortunately, what we don't have is one drug or a set of drugs that can effectively treat all the different aspects of the condition. And also what we don't have are any treatments that actually affect the underlying condition itself. We don't have anything that can, if you like, stop the disease process or reverse the disease process. All we have are treatments that can sometimes help with the symptoms. There's a lot of research going on into AHC across the world um, and many of the groups taking part in this research work closely together. There's a community of um, families, of people with the condition, scientists, doctors who are all working together. And this is really important for a condition as rare and as complicated and as poorly understood as AHC. Many people are working on the condition across the world. Um, people are looking at the genetics. Um, in many cases, we know that the condition is caused in an individual by mutation in a particular gene called ATP1A3. But there are some people who seem to have no mutation in this condition, and we're looking to see whether we can identify other genes that may cause it. We're trying to understand how these genetic changes, because AHC is a genetic condition, how these genetic changes can actually lead to the wide range of symptoms that people experience. People are looking at markers of the disease um, to see if we can understand how it affects the way the brain works, for example. We know that the condition can affect other parts of the body. We ourselves, for example, have um, led on studies looking at how the heart may be involved in AHC. And of course, um, many groups are looking at possible new treatments for AHC, both for its symptoms and to see if we can develop treatments that can affect the underlying disease process. Research in any condition is always subject to a number of problems. Of course, funding is always an issue. Um, research takes money, it takes people, it takes commitment. Um, and we're always looking to raise more funds for research into um, AHC. But there are other things also that make it um, sometimes a little bit more complicated to look at. It's a rare condition, so we need to make sure that we work together across the world so that we have enough people with the condition that we can look at to make sure that our conclusions are solid and robust. Um, it's difficult, of course, to get at the brain, the main organ that's involved in AHC. So sometimes it can be difficult to know exactly what's going on inside the brain um, when someone has the condition. We can use um, models to do some of these things, to answer some of these questions, but they're never as good um, as obviously um, looking at people with the condition. Um, and of course, there are many things that we don't understand about the condition um, and how it changes over time. So we need to do studies that extend over a period of time. And these too can be long and complicated studies to undertake. For many neurological conditions, we know that the condition can affect not just the person with the condition, but also their families, their loved ones, their carers. And I think this really is an important aspect of thinking about um, AHC in particular, because there are so many different um, aspects of the condition and so many things that can come and go, that can change over time, that can happen suddenly and that maybe people won't have experienced ever before or maybe won't experience ever again. And some of these can be quite frightening. We know that, um, for example, there can be weakness down one side of the body or the other, sometimes both sides of the body. Sometimes this may affect swallowing. We know that the heart may be involved. And sometimes we know that also, for example, breathing can be involved. So all of these things can happen together, separately, at different times, different phases of life. And this makes it, I think, especially difficult because it's not predictable. It's very difficult to know from one day to the next what might happen. 
And this, I think, adds um, additional burdens um, for families looking after children and adults with AHC. The challenges that AHC presents um, uh, affect everybody involved with the condition, obviously the people who have it and their families, but I think also other services such as the NHS and, and social services. I think one of the difficulties is that it's such a rare condition that most people won't have heard of it. And this itself, I think, can present challenges. People aren't familiar with it. People won't necessarily know um, the sorts of things that might help or might make things worse. And, um, and, and so uh, it's important that people are able to access information about the condition um, and contact the doctors who are looking after people with the condition if people are uh, admitted, for example, to accident and emergency. And I think it is really a question of knowledge um, and understanding about the condition. And there are resources available. There are a lot of family support groups and charities that have information available. Um, there are websites that provide information. And of course, doctors and nurses involved in the care of people with this condition can also provide information. So I think that's probably the main thing, is really an awareness or the willingness to look for additional information about this rare condition. In the future, I think um, important things will be to ensure that the diagnosis is made as early as possible once symptoms arise. It's important that the condition is recognised and people are aware of it in order to make the diagnosis. And of course, I think what we all hope is that we will be able to make that diagnosis securely, to understand the cause, which for many people um, involves a gene that we already know about. Um, and hopefully we can identify all the genes that may be involved. And I hope that by understanding what's going on in the brain and in other organs that are affected, um, we can begin to develop treatments that actually can um, reverse the disease process or address the disease process itself so that we can prevent all the things that happen in AHC from happening and so that hopefully people can lead as normal lives as possible. I think this is going to be quite a challenge but I think we are on the way um, and the information that we're gathering will help us hopefully um, achieve this aim.